Yeah, man. This is the Prester Hour. Lego. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're searching for Prester John because, you know, Hosea 3, we KTC. You know, Hosea 3, we keep the code. We keep searching for Kanda. We, because we know we're searching for something very important to you and me. No other script tell you to seek Hawaii and anybody else but David. Hosea 3 and 5. But let's take it back, you know, because this is going to be a great wave surf going into Preston John 65. You know, it's going to feel old and new. You know, I'm sure we're going to, you know, come across some, some great new transitional, foundational, functional pieces in our investigation. But we're also going to, you know, kind of go back to the beginning with that dragonfly and and see what we got. I mean, you can't always want new uh, drop all the time, but not really take the time to see what drop you already got. You know, what jewels have we uncovered? What have we overlooked? You know, these are the kind of ways we're approaching Press the job. 65 and you know i got a few tabs open you know just some oldies but goodies and maybe a, a couple of other spots that we can um target my nugget because this is you know a targeted investigation pinpoint my nugget we hitting them you know what i'm saying right over the head bone at this point you know with uh, nothing but sniper shots man so a lot of while let's pop it off let's get to uh exodus chapter 13 and let's dig on this uh, cloud and this pillar of fire. Verse 17, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that Hawah led them not by the way of the land of the Philistines. Although that was near, for Hawah said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. He said, nah, I don't want to lead them by a way they've gone before because it started popping off. They're going to run back into captivity. They need to go where they ain't never been before to make sure they keep on the path, on the journey, on the exodus. But Hawa led the people about by the way of the wilderness, by the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up unarmed, went up armed out of the land of Egypt. They went up armed <laughs> out of bondage. Okay. You know, dragonfly perspective. What kind of arms did they have? If this was today, you'd be walking out with your, you know, holding your chop chops, holding your choppers. Like, okay. I guess we headed out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They went out with the full ammo, right? And Moshe took the bones of Yosef with him. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, A while will surely remember you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sakoth and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness, and Hawa went before them by day in the pillar of cloud. Dragon Flutter. Hey, hey, this is the Presta Hour. Pillar of cloud. Pillar of cloud. All right, all right. I'm just going to have some fun with this cloud. You know, we, we looked into cloud before, um, you know, different etymologies on cloud. What are they seeing? You know, uh, initially it just refers to just any type of huge mass that's blocking or 
or shading you or you know anything that's transient floating over you. It's not just, oh, I see a cloud in the sky. That's a cloud. They use cloud for different things, like a bat, like a large mass that's flying over you, shading you, you know, giving you shade, you know, uh, covering you, right? Anything covering you would pretty much be a cloud. All right. The pillar of cloud by day. And a pillar of fire by night. So in today's terms, you take a regular normal cloud and then what? Then it turns into a fireball. What time does it turn into a fireball? <laughs> you know, just, uh, I mean, what's that transition like? What does it look like for the cloud to turn in? To the pillar of fire. Does a cloud disappear and then the fire disappear? Just just uh, reappear, you know what I mean? So we're going to dig on this cloud business. And we're going to do it in a beautiful way. Because these, these Nagas departed from bondage. Following this cloud. Rocking with Moshe. <laughs> Rocking with Hawaii Shua, right? Let's go, man. Um, and I'm just, I got a couple links open, man. I'm, I'm looking at the, and I'll, I'll leave all these links for the Press of John 65. You'll be able to get all these links, you know. But, you know, just some simple stuff. So, you know, I Googled, I'm, I'm taking you behind the scenes of Press of John 65. And to be honest with you, I'm not even finished with it yet. So, I still have a lot to uncover. I'm sure it's going to be, you know, a lot right here in this session that we're going to uncover that's going to be included in Press of John 65. But let's rock. Mix Koto. Yeah. Mix Koto. No Nahuatl language. Mix Kohoa. Mix Koto. Mix Koto is Mix Ko Mesh Ko Hawa Mesh Ka Hawa Hawa H U A. Then they turn it into M I M I X C O A T F. You don't see the Hawa, but like one of those documents that we was digging on said that sometimes instead of the H U A, they'll just say. UA. So instead of H U A, it would just say U A, which still is pronounced Hua. U A is Hua, Hua, Hua. Now, some would change it even further from U A to O A, which is what they just did in our face, which we have to go and wonder how many other times. Are they changing the HUA to OA? Especially with this Na Hoa to language. N A H U A Hoa to. And you have mix Ko Hoa to. Let's go. What's the meaning of mix Ko Toa? Mix Ko Hoa. Mix Ko Hoa to. <laughs> mix Ko Hoa to. What's the meaning of mesh Ko Hoa? It says cloud. Cloud is the mesh, they're saying, right? And the koato or hawato is serpent in love to Yohanna 10. <laughs> we got a replay. Love to Yohanna 10. He's taking care of a couple great things, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to run a couple weeks of replays for my bro, Yohanna 10. But that was. We're going to run some, uh, you know, real goodies, you know what I'm saying, that, that we've gotten. I mean, the bro has dropped so much drop, you know, throughout the years for the Nagas. I pre I'm i proud and I appreciate my bro, Johannes, and just like my, man, Five Eyes Ma, you know what I'm saying, uh, Yosef, all the real ones, man. This is what this is what the tribe been doing, man, natural. T 
Tech, Ty, Templar, you know what I'm saying? Brother Nature, CJ Battle, man, all the real ones, man. So, you know, this is what the Nog has been doing, man. So he dropped this, you know, uh, Serpent, Tanine, Tan, if you've been surfing away. And then you know that when you see Serpent, it's either going to refer to Dragon or Jackal. We're going to, you know, on Draconology this week, we will be playing Dragon or, Dra Dragon or Jackal because all they do is change one letter. The Tanin, Tanin becomes Tanim with an M to make to make uh, the Jackal. The singular form Tan is Jackal. The plural form Tanim with an M like Mary becomes the plural of Jackal. But they confuse that within the script and the translations when they translate Tanim or Tanin with an N like Nancy at the end. Tanin is the is the singular for dragon. You dig? So Tanin with an, with an N at the end is singular for dragon. Tananim would be the plural for dragons. I mean, so serpent, are we talking tan or tanin? Love to hear how to tan. And of course, we know we're talking dragons. So now, mix kohowatu is cloud dragon or dragon cloud. And what does this mix kohuatu have to do with Moshe? Kitsukohuatu. We're talking dragons. We're talking cloud dragons, rainbow dragons. Probably we're talking all dragons. Back to Exodus 13. Just let's surf the way. That's all we're doing. We're not, you know, leading you nowhere that you don't... <laughs> We're saying, let's look at this, because the translator's going to put it in two dimensions. You're going to have to be able to put it in five dimensions to pop off a of five eyes ma. You know what I'm saying? Hey, out to the bro. You're going to have to get it in, man. Hawa, verse 21, went before them. Right. Now, what form does Hawa take? When he goes before Israel. Back to Psalms 18. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, we 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 got to suffer. We got to suffer the dots. Let's go to Psalms 18. I just want to break this down like it's never been broken down before my night. All praise for why. So we can see clearly to establish a couple things about this cloud dragon. And what is it that Israel is following out of Egypt? And does that have anything to do with what we are about to experience? <laughs> is it mythology all of a sudden when the tribe was already following a cloud dragon? And if Hawa is going before them in Exodus 13, then what does Hawa, you know, What's the likeness of Hawa when Hawa pops off and goes before Israel again? Hosea 3 and 5. The children of Israel will return, seek the Creator and King David. Why? Psalms 18. Let's find out why. David's going to tell you why. Because when Hawa, you know, goes before David, when, when Hawa hears David's cry, battle cry, What's the likeness that Hawa takes? This is the closest you're going to get if you're looking at any type of likeness of the creator, you know, in the entire script. This, in this psalm right here, you're going to hear the read the creator's name or or hear the creator having specific bodily parts. You know what I'm saying? Like this is when you're going to hear of oh, the creator. Hears with his ears. <laughs> he blows smoke out of his nostrils. So he got ears, nostrils, fire out of his mouth. He devours. Ears, mouth, nostrils, feet. I mean, let's, let's go. I mean, we're talking Hawaii, right? 
I've never read another script that's describing the creator having ears and eyes and nostrils and feet. This appears to be a likeness that the creator may choose to take in battle time. This is the press to out. What's the definition of a prester? In 1828. Oh, a meteor. God. What's a meteor? Oh, a, uh, uh, you know, one of those stars with a tail, bearded with tangled locks. Dragon. Got it. Meteor, dragon. Prester, meteor. Prester, dragon. Psalms 18. Isaiah 3 and 5, search for Hawaii and Khan David, King David. Why? Psalms 18. <laughs> for Hawaii. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. A Psalm of David, the servant of Hawaii, who spoken to Hawaii. All right. So let's clearly establish this right here, that the creator, you know, is being spoken to directly by David. No hijacks allowed. Nothing in between the creator and King David. Khan? Huh? Okay. And when that happens, when you're KTC, when you have a direct vibration, connection with your creator, M-H-O-E, the creator hears you. The creator reacts to you. It's in your blood. It's in your inheritance. David spoke to Hawa. The words of this song in the day that Hawa delivered him from the hand of all his enemies. And from the hand of Saul. And he said, I love you. Hawa, my strength. Hawa is my rock. My fortress, my deliverer, my power, my rock. In him I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. My horn of salvation, my high tower, praise I cry. Is Hawa and I am saved from my enemies. Praised is Hawa, I cry, and I am saved from my enemies. He didn't say, praise Jesus. Nah, man. No hijacks allowed. UKTC, keep the code. No power before our power. Connect directly to Hawa. I praise Hawa. I am saved. The cords of death encompassed me. The floods of Belial assailed me. The cords of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon Hawa and cried into my power. Out of his temple, he heard my voice. Why do you seek Hawa and David? Because Hawa hears David. It's a tuning, it's a frequency, it's order over chaos. Here's David for what? For a specific battle cry. Perhaps Hawa will get to popping off for Khan David because Khan David's going to hit him in the frequency, right? And this frequency is within you. We're being brought in. We're being brought to the water so that you can do the same thing. In my distress, I call to the creator. No one else. No hijack allowed. I call to Hawa and cry to my power. And out of his temple, he heard my voice and my cry came before him 
unto his ears. The creator got ears. Let go. Then the earth did shake and quake. The foundation also, the mountains did, did tremble. They were shaking because he was wroth. Smoke arose from his nostrils. Smoke. The creator got nostrils. And fire out of his mouth. The creator got a mouth. Spitting fire out of his mouth. Did he devour coals flame forth from him? He bowed the heavens also. He came and thick darkness was under his feet. The creator got feet. Nose, ears. Hmm. Ears, nose, eyes. <laughs> Wait, feet. All right, I mean, so I'm just saying it's very descriptive of the likeness of Hawa. And this is not the only likeness. Hawa could be a butterfly. Hawa could be a bumblebee. Hawa could be that plant. Hawa could be a dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is dragon form, my noggin. Got fire out of his mouth devouring, smoke out of his nose. He hears David through his ears. He rode upon the cherub and did fly. He did swoop down upon the wings of the wind. So we got wings. <laughs> we got wings. Mouth with fire. Nose with smoke. Flying around, devouring with the fire, my naga. This is the likeness of a dragon, Ka. There's nothing else you can compare this to as an awake, as an awakened individual. And you combine this, compare this to what we're getting in the indigenous truth with this mesh, mesh, <laughs> mesh koalto, mesh kahuato, you know what I'm saying? And you know, all this flow, the dragon energy, I mean, that initial flow, that fire, water, ether flow, you know what I'm saying? That that earth flow, that, that you know, all element, you know, pri primordial flow. I'm talking platonic silence, Aha to the Templar. We got it all. This is what they're afraid of. This is why they have to change, change gods. They have to turn it. The New Testament to a new God scenario where now JC is slaying the dragon. Now you got this revelation crazy dragon who's trying to devour the child that is Jupiter, that is Zeus. <laughs> man, man. So let's go. That's that's a little bit of Psalms 18. Let's go back to Exodus 13. Let's work away back and then forward again. Let's go, my naga. This is the press the hour. Let's go. All right. Again. Mexico Alto. Mex Cahuato. Whose name also means cloud. Serpent or dragon or. Kamazti. Kamazult. C-A-M-A-Z-T-L-E. From Kamiz. Deer. Sandal. Without Kamax Titli, C A M A X T L I, was the god of the hunt and identified with the Milky Way, the stars, the heavens, all that, all, all that, right? <laughs> all that. But if we're talking cloud dragon or we're talking sky dragon, like the Papu Vu would say, god of the sky, god of the earth, frame or shape or flow, you know what I'm saying? I met it out the heavens, firmament. I met it out, right? Sky, God of the sky. I met it out. Um, now we're talking stars and heavens and this dragon in the clouds. Okay, I'm just saying. Back to <laughs> back to Exodus 13. We just got Psalms 18. That Hawa comes with smoke out of his nostrils, fire out of his mouth, on the wings of the wind. 
devouring with the fire, right? He got ears, nostrils, you know he got eyes, right? <laughs> so Hawa is choosing a dragon likeness to save David there. Does Hawa do the same thing? You know, here. <laughs> cloud of pillar or pillar of cloud. Hawa went before them, right? Just like Psalms 18. When Hawa went before David and the army, devouring. Now he's leading them out, right? So, and Hawa went before them by day in a pillar of cloud, <laughs> cloud dragon, to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire, fire out of his mouth did devour. To give them light. Woo. <laughs> Let's depress the out. Managa, they were led out by dragon fire. They were led by dragon fire. So everybody around knew not to. Try to tangle, cause no funk, you know what I'm saying? No static, like they said, man. That's why, that's why Egypt was breaking them off. That's why they left out armed. It was more than AK-47s, my naga. They were one, armed with that KTC. <laughs> they were armed with the code. But they were armed with, they were armed with fire-breathing dragons. Not, not just any dragons. Hawa, my naga. Cloud, pillar of fire, cloud drag, right? Now, what does that look like? Let's just act, not just breeze over that and act like, okay, cool. Hawaii led the children out, you know, in dragon form, lighting the way with dragon fire. Okay. <laughs> and again, you know, dig on the etymology of cloud. I got it up right here. Let's dig on. I'm just doing some background recon. Connecting this mix co -alto. You know why, man? Because later sources that we got, you know, other sources we got that we got later in our investigation or more recent in our investigation, should I say, connect this Makir, this lineage of Makir titles because there's more than one which is where they're getting this Amerique or America. And this Makir is also called Mixcoalto of the Tote. I'm talking about perhaps the original Makir. You know, by the time we get to Makir, Todros, and Sylvanus to Texas, 770, all that. That was like future my kids, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the the first OG my kid, his pops was my kid, and his like granddad's my kid, you know what I'm saying? So we got to, this my kid title means a lot, man. It means a lot. It's heavy. And in the uh, Forbidden Histories of America, even in the Treasures of Utah, they got a genealogy that they match up. Makir with Mixcoalto in parentheses, it says he's the same person. The original Mixcoalto, I mean the original Makir, the mark, the sign, the mock, the Makir, the mark, the sign, the covenant. What does it got to do with the dragon, the cloud dragon, the covenant, Exodus, the covenant? The Lawa. Let's say Moses is an original Makir. And he's leading the tribe just like David. <laughs> Let's say Moses is David, but you know, only from a wave surface. And now, 
You got Hawa rocking with him directly to lead the way. So, because we're getting this story from different translators and different, literally like different perspectives, you know what I'm saying? Different cultures, you know, you got someone writing on the Makiri, then you got the Mexico Alto indigenous flow. Now you, you're combining this with this uh, Kalelu's Promised Land, you know, Sylvanus to Texas, the Toltec flow. It's all playing, it's all happening. You know, this is why they would attribute, should I say, you know what I'm saying? Like, if Exodus 13, you got Moses leading the children out, but they're following a, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, which is Hawa, <laughs> who's leading the way. You see why they would group them together as, you know, oh, Later on, someone's telling the story as Mexico Oto as this God, this cloud, this cloud God, this cloud dragon, because it's related to the story of literally this Drakan that they're translating as cloud that's lighting the way with his fire that is the creator leading the children out of Egypt. So they're telling the story later and you don't know if they're talking about mixed culture as a man or they're talking about the creator element or the creator attributes, which connect to this cloud dragon, which connects to Psalms 18, hearing David and coming down with that smokeless Eleazar Lazar lighting the way, devouring with the fire. Nostrils filled with smoke. Fire out the mouth of Hawaii. But what's the definition of a cloud? Or etymology? The modern sense, rain cloud, mass of evaporated water, visible and suspended in the sky, is a metaphoric extension that begins to appear circa 1300 in Southern text based on similarly or similarity of cumulus crowds and rock masses. Okay, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> the usual old English word for cloud was W E O L C A N, wheel con, wheel con. Now you see that con at the end, right? <laughs> okay. In Middle English, S K I E, S K I E, ski, sky, also originally meant cloud, sky. Cloud. Sky is cloud. Cloud dragon is the same as a sky dragon or god of the sky, as the Papa Vol would say. The last entry for cloud in the original rock mass since Middle English Compendium is from circa 1475. The four fundamental types of clouds. All right, so we're getting into uh, this meteorologist stuff in 1802. Now, uh, let's see, meaning cloud-like mass of smoke or dust is from late 14th century. So, in the 1300s, it just meant like a cloud-like mass of smoke or dust. Don't we got smoke out the nostrils? <laughs> let's go. A cloud-like mass, right? So, any type of mass, you know, that could be dust, could be smoke, <laughs> Figurative, figuratively as something that obscures or darkens or threatens or casts a shadow. Right. <laughs> Cloud dragon. Because now it's, it's casting a shadow. It's covering, right? Back to Exodus, my noggin. 13, verse 21. I mean, let's keep reading it, man. <laughs> Managa with a dragonfly perspective. And Hawa went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light that they might go by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day 
and the pillar of fire by night departed not from before the people. Departed not from the tribe, my night. And again, you got Psalms 18. Because <laughs> when Hawa is going before Israel, because ain't that what it say? And uh, Exodus 13, verse 21, and Hawa went before them. Let's, let's emphasize that. Hawa went before them. So what does that look like? <laughs> What does it look like when Hawa goes before you, my knight? Uh, Psalms 18, verse 7. In my distress, I called upon Hawa and cried unto my power out of his temple. He heard my voice and my cry came before him unto his ears. Then the earth did shake and quake. The foundations also of the mountains did tremble. They were shaken because he was wroth. He was pissed off. So what happened? Smoke arose from his nostrils. And fire out of his mouth did devour. Coals flamed forth from before him. He bowed the heavens also. And came down and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Now, are they translating it, rode upon a cherub, or are they saying he's flying like a cherub? <laughs> yeah, he did swoop down upon the wings of the wind. Does the wind have wings? Are we talking about the dragon wings? He made darkness his hiding place, his pavilion round about him. Darkness his hiding place, right? Darkness of waters, thick Clouds of the sky. <laughs> Body bad. Hey, we in the press out. For the dismal, man. And I'm on. I got to pop off PJ65, man. I got to go. I got to pop off PJ65, man. And if you're getting us on a replay, a little replay, you got it here first. And hey, make sure you tell everybody, man. You know, get in this classroom, get in all the classrooms right here. Eat the squad is Liddy and Drop City. <laughs> Let go. Okay, verse 13, Psalms 18, at the brightness before him, there passed through his thick clouds. Back it up. Because he just started flying on the wings of the wind. Okay, okay. He's on the wings of the wind. Verse 12, he made darkness his hiding place, his pavilion round about him, darkness under the waters, or darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. So what does this cloud in Psalms 18 have to do with the cloud in Exodus 13? I'm just saying this is an example of how Hawa saves his people. And you want to tell me what if it don't happen? It's happened over and over again, my naga. You just forgot. You and the Ruach, Tardy Ma. It happens over and over again with King David. Why do you seek Hawa? And Kandawi, Hawa hears the frequency of the battle cry that David calls with, man. You got the vortexes, you got you got the secret places, right? You got the hiding places, right? This all comes through the David flow, Psalms 18. It's a personal relationship. A big reason why we still popping off today is because of the personal relationship with Hawa and King David. Hashtag facts. So you give Ahab an honor and make sure you M-H-O-E most high over everything. 
verse 13. At the brightness before him, there passed through his, his clouds, his thick clouds, hailstones and coals of fire passed through his thick clouds. Back to Exodus 13 for the dismount. Verse 21, and Hawa went before them by day in a pillar of cloud, his thick clouds, huh? And Hawa went before them by day in a pillar of his thick clouds, huh? Psalms 18 again. For the dismount. Verse 12, he made darkness his hiding place. His pavilion round about him, darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies at the brightness before him. There passed through his thick clouds, hailstones and coals of fire. And Hawa also thundered in the heavens and the most high gave forth his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot forth lightnings and discomfited them and the channels of waters appear and the foundations of the world were laid bare. And at their at at thy rebuke, O Hawa, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my enemy most strong and from them that hated me for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but a was a stay unto me. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Hawa. Rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, has he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of Hawa and have not wickedly departed from my power. For all his ordinances were before me, and I put not away his statutes from me. UKTC. And I was single hearted with him and kept, I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore has a while recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyes, not nobody else's, his eyes. With the merciful, thou dost show thyself merciful. With the upright man, thou dost show thyself upright. With the pure, thou dost show thyself pure. And with the crooked, thou dost show thyself subtle. <laughs> and for those dost save the afflicted people. For thou dost save the afflicted people. But the haughty eyes, thou dost humble. For you, Hawa, dost light my lamp. Hawa, my power. Does lighten my darkness for by you I run upon a troop and by my power do I scale a wall as for Hawa his way is perfect the word of Hawa is tried he is a shield unto all them that take refuge in him for who is Hawa save our power who is a rock except our power our power our creator that girds me with strength and makes my way straight, who makes my feet like hinds and sets me upon high places, who trains my hands for war so that my arms do bend a bow of brass. Thou hast also given me thy shield of salvation, UKTC, and thy right hand has holded me up and thy condensation has made me great. Thou has enlarged my steps under me and my feet have not slipped. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. 
This ain't no turn the other cheek. Neither did I run back till they were consumed. This ain't no turn the other cheek. I have smitten them through so that they are not able to rise. This ain't no turn the other cheek. Naga. They are falling under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast made my enemies turn their backs unto me. And I did cut off them that hate me. Thy cry, they cried, but there was none to save. Even unto Hawa, but he answered them not. Oh, hijack city is a wrap. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. This ain't no turning of the cheek. I did cast them out as the mire of the streets. This ain't no turning of the cheek. Thou hast delivered me from the contentions of the people. Thou hast made me the head of the nations. A people whom I have not known serve me. What did the press of John letters say? As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The sons of the stranger dwindle away before me. The sons of the stranger fade away and come trembling out of their close places. Hawa lives and blessed be my rock and exalted be the power of my salvation even my power that executes vengeance for me and subdues people under me he delivers me from my enemies yeah thou lifts up above them lift me up above them that rise up against me thou delivered me from the violent man Therefore, I will give thanks unto you, Hawa, among the nations, and will sing praises unto your name, Halawa. Great salvation gives heed to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. This is the Preston Hour. Hawa! Yeah, man.